What is up guys and welcome back to Forest Green Career Mode. This is episode number 7 here. Once again we are back on the quote unquote grind. It is a part of the week where we upload 4 or so episodes in a row. I mean we did it last week so maybe we can do it again this week. There's hope but anyway. Yeah it's been, uh, it's been a little while and I'm glad to have some more episodes back for you because I am in love with this career mode right now. I am deeply enjoying playing it and we continue on here. The quest to greatness with Forest Green with a tough game against Luton Town. I think you saw it in the table there. It is very close between the two teams right now. We're in that playoff spot. They wanted to get in that playoff spot and Luton Town right from the start were coming out with a lot of fire and it was very difficult to contain them to be fair and it took a while. This was our first shot of the game halfway through the first half. Comes in from Ben Breaton. It's a real good save to be fair and on the rebound sadly. Uh, well the header went wide and it was caught for offside. Then unmarked in the second half. Collins made a great save there, saving us. I mean, this literally saving us. This is just a bunch of highlights of just so many close opportunities uh, throughout the game. And just some of them, there were so many more that you see. Like that one there. Double post hit. First Figuera, then Reese Brown. We couldn't apply that finishing touch. The both keepers were having some of the stand-up performances of their lives. We continue on here all the way now to the 81st minute. Still looking to try and break that deadlock. Chumacero in. He hits it. And for a split second, when that happened, I thought it went in. Honestly, I thought it was a goal. And you'll see on the replay, look at the way that's hit. It's so beautifully struck. But uh, it, it, just, it just wasn't enough, unfortunately. We, we, we both played incredible games. We were both putting on a fantastic performance. But it just was not enough to get a goal. And we hung on. Both sides hung on, really, for a nil-nil draw. And I think that might be one of the first nil-nil draws we've had. If not the first. I honestly don't remember having a nil-nil draw yet. So it was very surprising that that happened. But that draw with Luton knocked us out of the automatic promotion spot. And we need to get right back in there. And we we're going to try and do that here in another home fixture against Carlisle United. Carlisle were some ways down the uh, the order. I think they were about uh, 17th maybe when we played them. So obviously we couldn't underestimate them. But a huge mess up made there in defence by the new by the youth player, Jonathan Bennett. And it allowed Carlisle to get a nice little, what it was almost a finesse chip more than anything. To give them the lead halfway through the first half. You'll see it here in the, um, in the replay now. Bennett just kind of shuts down for ages. It might just be, you know, youth and, and experience, I guess you could say. But just the ball gets flicked back to him. One, he should have got it. Two, he's not marking him there when he has to run back towards him. And allows him free range, free space. And he is going to put forward a nice little finesse, little chip. To uh, make it 1-0 for them. Just well uh, to make it one nil for them, so they could potentially head into half time with the equal uh, with the the lead. But we were looking for the equalizer, is what I should say. Reese Brown makes a, makes a lovely run here, ball into Traore. He holds on to it, back heels it down into Brown, who gets it into Liam Noble. The ball kind of bounces around in the box shortly before it arrives at the feet of none other than Ben Brayton for his something like 16th goal of the season. I think this one was. Another in another goal. That's all I can say. Just another goal for this man. 16 goals, I believe it is now. Just in the league itself. We get very lucky with that back heel. Noble's pass or shot, whatever it is, bounces around. I'm surprised Brayton was called as onside. I thought he was offside when the ball came into him. But it's 1-0 just before the halftime whistle. And Ben Brayton is elated with himself there. And goes to celebrate with the Forest Green fans. As we'll see now, th that was goal number 16 on the season for him. And we're not even in January yet. But here we go. Second half. It's underway right away. Ben Breta makes a run down the wing. Passes it across the box to Reese Brown. Who right away makes the score to give us a 2-1 lead at the start of the second half. That was absolutely incredible. Breton performed this one it might have been in the last episode when he crossed it across the box this time he passes it and Reese Brown has got no one around him it's like he almost snuck into the box 2-1 for him and I believe this was goal number six on the season in all comp in uh, the league for, for Reese Brown Ben Breaton was knocking in some assists that's for sure as of late and he was looking to continue them on here Reese Brown I think at this moment in time leading 
the top assists for Forest Green. But look at that there. We move on a little bit later. Marsh Brown, who got subbed on. Absolutely incredible flick of control. Runs all the way. And it could have well been one of the best solo goals we've seen in this career. Absolutely wondrous bit of technical work. And I know he, I know he only had like one defender to deal with, but still. But nevertheless, we hang on. 2-1 win. Just what we needed. Three more points. Come back from a little mess up kind of early on in the game as a whole and we're able to bounce back and take home the three points and we need those three points because now of course we take a tough trip away we have our faults when we look when we're away from home and daddy project as you see him there knows that he wants to make sure that we are able to fork out a good win here against exeter as you can see they're in ninth as well so they're in contention to get in that playoff spot we are not that far away from the um January transfer window which kind of harks the halfway point of the season so it, it is all to play for at this point all of these games are still incredibly important no matter who you're playing and it was a tough game for us early on that was the first shot we registered and it was the only shot we registered up until near the end of the first half when they play a free kick short Brayton plays the ball at Chumacero no one around Chumacero no one expects Chumacero and he opens the scoring with the assist from Ben Brayton Exeter's tactics I guess would have played a lot of balls short because they did it a lot in goal kicks uh, especially and maybe when a, a, an offside was called I think as it was in that regard and they just play it short finally got on the end of it and Ben Brayton with a simple pass enabled it to be 1-0 but just before the break Exeter looked to try and respond but a great save from Collins made sure that wasn't going to be the case not even the end of the first half yet still the 45th minute Morris plays the ball into Ben Brayton what can he do from here awkward position finesse shot by Brayton 2-0 goal number 17 on the season for this youngster when you look at how many goals he's put in and when you look at how incredible this man has been, you start to realize whatever it was, the 1.4 million we paid for him was an absolute steal from Nottingham Forest. Lovely little pass in there by Morris and just Ben Brayton just being himself essentially. I think at this point Brayton had gone up to a 70 rating as well, making him, I, I think, the best rated player in League 2. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but... Without a doubt, to me anyway, he is the best rated player in League 2. And there we are, scoring a third goal at the start of the second half. Laird, the left back, getting, I think, maybe his third goal on the season. It's a nice little cross in. Keeper runs out to try and punch it, completely misses the ball. And it's 3-0. And at this point, the game was practically over. We only had a one main, one, uh, one main man on the pitch in Reese Brown. And he was the one to make it 4-0. He got subbed on as a centre mid. I believe it was for Figuera. And look at the job he does here. Leaves himself in so much space. Once again, kind of surprised he was onside. But left himself in so much space. And I believe it was one of the younger guys we haven't used yet. I think it was like Anderson or something. Who gets the assist. So good on him as well. But we end the game with a 4-0 win away from home against Exeter, which was exactly what we needed. And uh, there was kind of no time to sit on that victory, I guess you could say, because in this process here, I think it's from Carlisle to the last game of this episode, Wickham. So what, four games we had, I think it was all of those in the span of a week. I'm talking like the Carlisle game was Tuesday and this Wickham game, I think, was on Monday or Tuesday it may have well been four games in a week it was something terrible and you're seeing it there by the lineup I'm kind of playing a lot of players you wouldn't expect in the team and a lot of players who just kind of are there to fill in where people are kind of fatigued but absolutely incredible work there by Figuera he gets himself a brace in that simmed game against Lincoln we go on to win it 2-1 just because it was almost he, he scored very early on and then he scored almost right after they got the uh, equalizing goal. So incredible work by Figuera there. But we've got another game against another tough team in the league. Wickham, who are not that far off us, I believe, in the league table. I didn't see, didn't catch it fully. But there is Ben Brayton adding to his assist number once more. I don't know how he's doing this. He's a striker for crying out loud. And I'm pretty sure at this point Ben Brayton was on about 10 assists. 
plays the ball once more to Chumacero to give us a 1-0 lead in one of the first shots of the game. Absolutely incredible. But Wickham will look at a bounce back. Wickham were tough to contain and they're proving it here. Ball whipped into the far corner. Hardly even cleared out of the box and Chumacero unable to header it away. Just too small basically to get to the header and Wickham make it 1-1. Meaning our lead was barely anything to celebrate. It was just kind of a cluster in the box. How they were able to play that ball uh, from basically from side to side is beyond me. They switched the play up here. And one touch, I think that's Bagayoko, who just kind of clears it piss poorly. Once more, Bagayoko in the, in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. We tried to get the second goal right away, as you saw there. But we weren't giving in. Reese Brown plays on the ball. Ben Brayton almost unmarked and almost scoring his 18th on the season. We continue on here, and what a goal by Wickham. I, have, I, I was not expecting it as, at all. It was uh, kind of a little bit about Ben Brayton versus uh, Cohen Hall, and, well, Cohen Hall delivered for sure there with that goal. Absolutely thumping shot. The Collins had nothing to contain. The free kick here. Nice little chip. Gets over. I, I can't tell who's supposed to mark him. I think it's Coimbra who I've had my fair share of problems with. He doesn't mark him, doesn't do his job, and it's 2-1 at the break. Wickham in the lead here, and it's the last thing we want. So Ben Brayton gets his shooting boots on. No, he doesn't. He hits it with his left foot, and it goes drastically out wide and a great opportunity. Reese Brown now making the run in. There's Figuera. He's working hard with the ball. Sees Ben Brayton almost practically unmarked. And this time, the header does its job. 2-2 just after the hour mark and that will be number 18 on the season for Ben Brayton the top goal scorer right now in League 2 lovely little chip by Figuera it's not really so much of a cross it's essentially a chip and that's what made it even better move on here even later another incredible run by Brayton Brown and Brayton linking up something incredible but we couldn't apply the finishing touches neither could Wickham and that meant we held on to a 2-2 draw at home Kind of disappointing. I really wanted to take home the three points again, but it's okay because at the end of the day, what, well, we took home uh, three wins and two draws, I think it was. So I'm, all, I'm totally okay with that. And you can see in the table, though, we are losing a little bit of ground to Notts County. Four points behind them as we are just after the halfway point in the season. Still some work to do, but I know in this January transfer window, even if we don't make signings, we're still going to be good to continue on. That'll end this episode of Cream Mode. I'll see you tomorrow for the next one. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, guys. And so on.